Me too, man. Welcome to our Backyard Brothers podcast. Uh, we are here uh, talking about bowl games and football in general. We'll talk about some NFL uh, later on as well. It feels like we're we're completely forgetting basketball for a little while, uh, but that's not the case. The Pistons won a game. <laughs> that's news. It's in news. fact, I think they're undefeated in 2024. That's no, that's true. <laughs> Fair point. There's always they, a bright side. The 28 game losing streak is over, but is solidified in history, and that's a tough mark to beat. But anyway, that, that's that's all we'll talk about basketball today. I'm sure we'll, we'll get back there in a few weeks. I'm sure too. But uh, we're going to review some bowl games and uh, then talk about the national championship game and move on from there. So I'm going to share my screen real quick if I can figure out how to do that. Before we do that, we have the memory, don't we? That's right. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, yes, Cody. we have a memory to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're going to go with the 2006 Super Bowl. It was the Colts and the Bears. I think it was Super Bowl 41 uh scott correct me if i'm wrong on any of that i think i i think that's right um and i remember uh just being excited really as a colts fan for the colts to have gotten there the, if you guys remember the patriots would constantly knock us out of the playoffs or really any other team that was playing us uh had the ability to knock us out until uh we were finally able to put it together we had uh, a couple of guys who were injured throughout the season coming back, like uh, Bob Sanders uh, and I think Dwight Freeney, maybe even. We had had, we started procuring a run game with Joseph Adai and uh, Dominic Rhodes. Uh, and we really had a shot. And then the game started, and Devin Hester uh, scored a touchdown within the first, I think it was like 14 seconds of the game. Uh, <laughs> Return the on the initial kickoff. Yeah. And was that the first time that it happened, right? Or no, for the opening kickoff to be run back for a touchdown? It was the so. earliest lead in, in in Super Bowl history. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's what I had thought. I wasn't sure if that had happened before. And I was like, oh, okay. So we made it all the way here. And then in Colts fashion, we're going to get just demolished by somebody or something crazy will happen. Ben Roethlisberger, not even on the team we're playing, will come tackle somebody and we'll lose. <laughs> and so that's, <laughs> that's kind of how it started for me. Uh, and then, you know, we started to pick it up. It was a, a more competitive game back and forth. Uh, and toward the end, our defense is actually what got us the game in that. Um, I think it was Cal Calvin Hayden, right? They got the interception, scored it, and sealed the game. Uh, and I think the final score on that one was 29-17. Uh, um, but I remember just the first half of that game thinking, who's going to who's gonna destroy our chances at winning this Super Bowl uh, at the end of this? Because we had just famously choked in the playoffs previous to actually making it there. So it was just kind of like, ah, who's going to do it? Uh, and luckily they held out and they got a, a great win in which it was one of the, one of the more exciting Super Bowls I had seen. Uh, and that's why I picked it to be my memory. That, that that's a great memory, and I, I think that was the year we we being the Hanson brothers had moved away. Uh, I think that was our first Super Bowl. No, in yeah, it was our first Super Bowl in Arkansas that we had watched. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, because we hosted a Super Bowl party. Yes, no, or no, it was oh, the second. Okay. It was the second Super Bowl we hosted. No. The first was one was February not, 06 or 07. It was 07. So it was the second Super Bowl we did in Arkansas. So, uh, yeah, anyway, um, I remember thinking the same thing, Nancy. I remember th that there's no way the Bears can win this game. Uh, but remember, they came in, the Bears were the number one defense in the league that year. Uh, that, that That's how they got to the Super Bowl. It was, it was behind Brian Erlacher and Lance Briggs and uh, Mike Brown, the safety, and uh, a few other guys like that. That Bears defense was legit. And it looked like the Bears defense was going to win the game in the first quarter because, or and Devin Hester as well, because Devin Hester returns the kickoff, and then the first possession, I think Peyton Manning was intercepted. Uh, yeah, I think in, so. That first, and the Bears have like a 14-6 to 6 lead at the end of the first quarter. And then they only score three points the rest of the game. The Bears do, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it. I mean, 
besides Peyton Manning winning his first Super Bowl and everything, which was uh, wonderful, and the Colts winning their first Super Bowl in 30 years or whatever it was, uh, it, uh, it, it that, that was all great. But it was the impact of Devin Hester because the Colts never kicked it deep again. They squib kicked it <laughs> and gave the Bears the ball about the 40-yard line every every possession after that. So the impact that Devin Hester can make on a football game was was amazing. And but I, yeah, I, I remember it very similarly that uh, the Colts had to realize, oh no, we we have to play this game differently. And uh, and then they carved up the defense in the final three quarters. Yeah, I I don't really remember. I, I remember the game being on. I don't remember a whole lot watching and everything. I would I would have been twelve years old, um, and I was probably more interested in playing Madden or something at the time or something or or, eat, or eating a dip or something like that than than focusing on the game. Um, but, but I do remember the first kickoff, Devin Hester, Devin Hester being one of the names I grew up just loving and wanting to watch, uh, which is why I was also a little mad that he didn't get inducted in the hall of fame last year. Uh, hopefully he will this year. Um, but, and then Brian Erlacher also another name that I grew up hearing all the time. Um, as I went back and watched the highlights of the game, first off, great, great game to watch. Um, the game was definitely impacted by the weather. It was raining, like, I think the whole time. And there were, I believe there were nine turnovers in the game. Nine turnovers. There were six, uh, no, five fumbles and four interceptions total by both teams total. That is just ridiculous. What's that? I just looked at the box score. Eight turnovers total, which. Eight eight turnovers. Okay. I I think there were five five fumbles and three interceptions, something like that. But it it was ridiculous. Like, I remember there was one point where there was. Um, I forget who it was. One team fumbled it, and then literally the next play, they fumbled it back to the team. Um, I, I don't remember that happening in the game, but I can I can only imagine the frustration of every team just like just hold on to the daggone ball, <laughs> you know. But it's like at the same time, it's raining. You, it's hard to hold on to this ball, and so, uh, which is probably why Grossman kind of gave the game away, you know, throwing a few those picks at the end. So, anyway, I I, I think that was the part that stuck out to me most is how many turnovers there really were in that game. That was just crazy to me. Yeah, the only only follow up I'll, I'll I'll have on this is you know wh- when it comes to Peyton Manning's legacy, like you said, Peyton Manning didn't have a great game weather impacted, but the NCS you mentioned that his career up to here was well, he's stopped by either Tom Brady or Ben Roethlisberger. One of them beat him and went and then usually would win the Super Bowl, um, and so for Manning to finally get to that level and then to win the big game helped cement what was already a fantastic career and, and uh, continued to springboard him forward into a, a hall of fame career. Um, and so it was great to see remembering at that time, Manning blossom into what we all wanted and expected him to be in that as a Super Bowl champion. Yeah. And the the fact that Rex Grossman made it to a Super Bowl is laughable, but uh, <laughs> it was that bears defense. That's a great memory. Thanks for that. Yes. Okay, now we will hit our uh, bull recap, and I now will share my screen. So this makes sense to me, and I will explain it. Do you see my screen here? Nope. Uh, Not yet. No. Nope. Just you so far. Oh. Okay. Uh, why can't you not see my screen? Um, share. How about? I there we go. Uh, there we go. Okay, do you see a spreadsheet? Yep, I do. Okay, so this, uh, th- this are these are all the bowl games. These are who Cody, Dustin, Scott, and Yancey picked. There were nine games, Yancey, that you were not a part of picking. Uh, and so, uh, and then the real result here. Um, I'll explain the colors in a second, but then I also have uh, the the numbers that we all got right. Uh, here and the percentage because I thought since uh, Yancey was didn't have the nine that percentage might be better f- reflected uh, based on the, the number of full games that we want. Dustin won uh, with 26 full games. That's a, almost a 62 percent correct. Uh, and then Cody and I both got exactly the same. Both got 23, which is 55 percent about. And Yancey had 17, but out of 
uh, 33, which ended up being just over 50%. And calculating if you would have got these nine games about the same as us, it would have been exactly 23. So you, us three, Yancey, Dustin, and Yan, Yancey, Cody, and I were all about the same level. And Dustin was three points better than us. And I'll I'll show right. how that how that is here. So blue is getting it right. Uh, I had gold here showing that all three of us picked the right winner, uh, or all four of us in this case, that we all picked the correct winner. Okay. Um, if it's all red, we all universally picked the wrong team. <laughs> uh, all four of us or all three of us. Um, and the green is you were alone picking the right one. Uh, in that case, uh, Cody got one. He got Coastal Carolina over San Jose State. I, I also got one. I got Rutgers over Miami, while the rest of you picked Miami. Yancey, you got two. Uh, Air Force over James Madison and Northwestern over Utah. Nice. Um, Dustin got four, and that's probably why he won. He got South Florida over Syracuse. He got Boston College over SMU. He got Wyoming over Toledo. And he got that college football playoff, Washington over Texas. So, nice. yeah. so Cody, your 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 Pac-12 love. I'm so 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 surprised you didn't choose Washington. I mean, I was rooting for them. <laughs> I was rooting for them, but I just didn't think they would win. I just thought it would be Texas. Yeah. So let's uh if you want to pick out any of these games in particular. Uh, which of these games before we get to the playoff ones? Let's not talk about those yet. But uh, if you want to highlight any of these games or or anything in particular, if you don't, that's fine. But uh, I want to give, uh, like for example, I'll call you out, Cody. Talk about that Northwestern and Utah game in particular. What you saw there? And yeah, I, I'm wearing my my youth. I'm right. I'm always repping them as as much as I can. But I will say that was the most boring bowl game of my entire life. Okay, it was awful. And Bryson Barnes had a chance to show what he could do because he was going to the portal, and I don't think he's going anywhere now because he absolutely sucked. He might go to Dixie State, um, if anything, else, or, or go to like a Division three school now. I don't even know, but which I feel for him. You know, he that, that's kind of your chance to to audition for wherever wherever you're gonna. Uh, a transfer to and, and it was terrible so the defense I thought did okay they were able to hold able to hold Northwestern to 14 but again I mean 14 to 7 score that is just pitiful um and uh I, I, I have nothing else to say about that it was it was just pitiful and and goodbye Bryson Barnes <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, there was. Uh, we all predicted it was going to be that kind of game. We just most of us predicted the other side. And uh, Dust and Yancey, you were the one that picked Northwestern. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I just, I just figured they were going to be able to to put up more points. You know, as John Madden would say, the the team that gets the ball in the end zone, it, they're generally <laughs> going to win if, if they score more than the team on the defensive side of the football. <laughs> that was flawless. That was thank perfect. you, thank you. I appreciate it. Good. I can <laughs> tell you've been practicing. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Also, the purple. There's only one purple because Dustin. This is the one that we didn't. We skipped over you on the Clemson Kentucky. Uh, I gave you Clemson since the rest of us said Clemson. I don't know. Would you have said Kentucky here? Do you know? Do you remember? I don't. I, I would have said Clemson, I'm sure. Okay. Oh, sure. So, now, yeah, you're just saying that. Okay. <laughs> I, I gave you Clemson anyway because, you know, I wasn't going to just knock you off a point just because we skipped over you. But <laughs> and, and in that case, um, I was going to say Northwestern, actually. So, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, we have... you guys go back and, and skip me? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. What other ones do I want to call out? Uh, how about all of us being wrong? about two of these first of all Ole Miss beating Penn State yeah. uh well th that number one defense had nothing had no answers against a really good Ole Miss offense anyone want to talk about that one uh, I was just I was just really impressed honestly I, I can't say surprised I was honestly just impressed with Ole Miss they uh they looked really really good and they looked um better than their ranking so yeah, yeah. um I would say 
Tennessee and Iowa that we, you know, we, we predicted Tennessee would have some strength there. Iowa has a good defense and then it was a big blowout. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Yancey was alone in picking Iowa to, on their defense, but uh, Tennessee had no problem <laughs> against that defense. But um, another, another couple I wanted to point out uh USC did show up and they beat Louisville. That was something we all got wrong. Uh, we all figured it would be the same exact kind of bowl game last year because USC was not in the playoff. They wouldn't show up, but it was the opposite. They they really show, showed up with a backup quarterback who looks like he's going to be pretty good next year. So through six touchdown passes. What was his name? Miller Moss, I think his name is, or Miller or something like that. I was – he – USC is in good hands going forward. He was very impressive. Until he transfers next year again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Arizona, we all predicted them to beat Oklahoma, and they did. Uh, it was a it was a high-scoring game, but uh, Arizona just kept scoring points, and Oklahoma couldn't catch up with them. So nice job, Pac-12. Nice job, Arizona. Uh, this one is one I wanted to call out as well. Georgia, Florida State, that was one where Florida State did not want to play in the game because they didn't get in the playoff. I think they had – how many starters sat out in that game? Uh, about 10 to 12, I think. I, I noticed the uh, – on their – it was 12 starters sitting out. 11 of them were, 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 were the defense, which was the crazy thing. So their entire defense sat out. Oh. Well, which what is do like, you expect to happen to exactly. you? Like <laughs> – I I joked about Miami sending their soccer team, but I didn't know FSU was gonna do it. Like that's that's insane. I I just don't see why you would why are you gonna subject those second string guys to that for no reason other than you're upset you're not in the game you think you deserve to be in. But clearly, I mean, when you get big sixty three to three, you didn't really belong there in the first place. You were a punching bag, as far as I'm concerned. You're, I mean, a scrimmage team will hopefully do better to make your team better. <clears throat> yeah, and Kirby Smart said that at the at the press conference. So George's coach, he he said it's real real disappointment that for for both Florida State, the they had a great season, they went undefeated, and then they have that kind of showing where their players don't want to play in a in this game and they get beat that way where it looks as bad as it does. And then it's also bad for Georgia. They don't they don't get to play the game that they wanted to play. They wanted to play against a good Florida State team, and they didn't get to they didn't get their uh, their side of it as well. That that needs to be uh, acknowledged also that Georgia wanted to play a good team. They wanted to have a good game. And instead, they uh, how how fun is it to 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 beat a punching bag that just falls over every time you punch it? So yeah, it's just it's just, it's just petty, you know. Like you know, you you didn't know listen to playoffs. We're not going to play. You know, just full dramas look away. Like like really just just. I don't know. Uh, it, it just annoys me, and that's the part of college football I hate right now. Yeah. Uh, last one I want to talk about. Uh, we were all right about Oregon thrashing Liberty. <laughs> uh, Liberty didn't stand a chance in that one, and uh, we all predicted a big – actually, everyone but Cody predicted a big or and everyone was right there. Uh, we all predicted 30-plus win and ended up being 39 points. So, um Yeah. The, no no chance for liberty. Go back to doing taxes, right, Lindsay? So, yeah. hey, my man. <laughs> okay. Uh, any comments about that one or any other bowl game before we get to the final two there? Uh, Boston College surprised me against SMU. I really didn't think they were going to uh, perform like they did. So I got to say shout out to Boston College. And it was a good Doug Flutie reference, though. I'm not taking <laughs> but but uh they really were more impressive than i expected them to be yeah missouri beating ohio state and uh notre dame thrashing oregon state um there's a few other ones in there but yeah okay let's uh let me stop share so we can see all of us again Let's talk about uh, the two great bowl games. Uh, I thought this was the one of the best playoffs that we were given. 
as college football fans, two really good games between two really good teams, really well coached, and everyone showed up and played great games. Um, yeah, so you, you said a, an Alabama versus Texas final, and it went completely the other way. Uh, Dustin, you got it completely right. Uh, Michigan versus Washington. Cody and I got half right. But um, So let's talk about that first one, Alabama-Michigan. Uh, what takeaways did you get from that game? I want to hear from everyone on this one. Yeah. Uh, Michigan has a really fast defense. They get to the ball really fast. And so it'll be interesting to see how Washington, who's very powerful on offense, is able to try to combat against that. And so I was impressed with with Michigan's uh, defense there in particular. They're fast to the ball. Yeah, I, uh, just to add to that, I um, kind of going off the same idea, the, the pass rush especially. Uh, and that might be kind of what you're hinting at, but the pass rush was was phenomenal. They got what, what, five, six sacks was on him, five sacks, um, and just doing that with 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 Alabama of all SEC teams is, is really impressive. Um, I was really impressed that they were doing that, and then just yeah, their their defense, their their secondary, everything about their defense was amazing, and their offense. Blake Corum, uh, I was surprised honestly was not in the 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 top four of the Heisman. Probably just because he's not a quarterback, but he deserved those Heisman votes he did get. So a great, great Michigan showing. Yeah, I was I was really surprised to see really Michigan's heart. They uh they displayed a lot of heart at the end of that game. Um, I saw that game going for Alabama. I thought they were going to be able to overpower them and just kind of hold them out. Um, but I think Michigan just did a did an amazing job of refusing to lose that game. Um, like you guys were saying, their their defense was incredible, uh, and they they looked incredible against Alabama, a team that I thought was going to be better than them. Um, but they just uh, they continued to grind on, and it, it didn't look like they thought they were going to lose that game at any point. Um, and I think that's what what really pulled Michigan through, and I was impressed by that quite a bit. Um, and we we know that they're a really well coached team, and that shown through in the game also. Yeah, I was uh, just like you guys. I was impressed with both teams uh, in that game. They uh, Michigan got up early, and then Alabama. I thought Michigan played a great first half. They dominated the first half uh, in in all phases, and I was thinking that 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 it's going to be low scoring, but Michigan's defense can hold Alabama completely out. And then Alabama really showed up in that second half. And uh, and then Michigan, like I like how you phrased it, Yancey, they refused to lose. And uh, they got they got back to the championship game for the first time since, I think, 1990, 1991, 92, somewhere, somewhere around there. Something like um, that. Yeah. Okay, game number two, uh, Texas versus Washington, a much higher scoring game. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and give my, my thoughts first. Michael Penix was phenomenal in that game. The way that he, he was just throwing the ball in tight corners and tight places, and uh, those three receivers are, are just fantastic players, all three of them for, for Washington. And uh, they uh, – they scored enough points to uh, hold off that Texas rally that I thought was going to uh, end up winning that game at the end, but uh, the, they scored enough points to hold it off. And so I was very, very impressed with Washington's offense in particular. Michael Penix was, uh, he's hes going to be the the second lefty we have in the NFL here in a couple, in a year or two. But... Yeah. Um, just a second that I was, I'm in love with Michael Penix Jr. Watching him throw that ball, let me just tell you, I'm like drooling when I see him throw that. It's it's one of the most beautiful uh, uh, deep passes I've I've ever seen. Uh, and I anyway, and then Roman Dunze is 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 just absolutely fantastic. All the receivers, McMillan, Polk, um, they're all really good. So, but oh, Dunze just stands out. He's catching he's catching the balls that are in tight corners. That's just really hard to do. Um, and so it's just, it's just absolutely amazing. I don't know how else to, exp to, to explain it, but he's just, uh, he was like a, you know, a create your own player in, in, in NCAA or something kind of person. He's great. 
Yeah, the, the game went just as I predicted, right? Um, with Washington's win, um, I, I think I think I made that choice more of a dislike for Texas than in a respect for Washington. But I think I've gained a lot more respect for Washington uh, there, and and I'm really excited to see what they do in in preparation for Michigan and, and see if they can bring fireworks um, in order to to beat Michigan. Yancy. Okay, sorry, I didn't know. I saw the rotation. I wasn't sure where we were going. I yeah. think uh, I I have to keep on with what you guys were saying in Phoenix's performance. It was it was crazy. And when I was looking up his numbers uh, in preparation to talk with you guys about this on the podcast, I was thinking, whoa, like this this guy's something different. I, I, something doesn't he have like four thousand yards or something? No. That's crazy, right? I'm not. I'm not no. ignorant. That's crazy. That's like crazy. four thousand yards is nuts, and the guy can run. Uh, and you know, um, that's that's impressive. A thing we didn't really touch on too much was Washington's defense showed up, and they they, they did let thirty one points go, but they also won the game against Texas. They they stopped that play from the what four yard line. Uh, and that's not easy to do. And they they held firm and they played extremely good defense uh, in the in the last moments of the game when it really counted. Maybe not the best defense throughout. They didn't shut them down or anything like that. Um, but if if you can call on a defense to make big stops when you need them, you you can perform well. And that's exactly what they did. Um, and I can't talk about enough how impressed I am with that Phoenix kid. He I, I agree with you, Scott. He's going to be something to watch in the NFL for sure. Um, and uh, Cody, I think you're you're right for your salivation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go proposing or nothing, but uh, definitely the guy is incredible, uh, yeah. and he he's going to be a force to watch in the future, uh, just in the sport of football in general. <laughs> yeah, Cody just Donald, real- I- coming up so yeah <laughs> i'll send him something no, I, I was gonna say though I, i'm really me and a lot of other seahawk fans on a page are wanting them to draft michael Penix, you know and have him stay in seattle but i have also would be worried about his injury history he has a lot of injury history which hasn't slowed him down at all the last two years um but that is something to be concerned about like going forward with him yeah okay national championship predictions here dustin you don't get to change your prediction uh because you had a washington versus michigan championship and you picked washington but i but because the rest of us get the change i will give you that opportunity do you want to change over to michigan or do you want to uh keep it at washington i'm gonna i'm gonna keep washington i think that although michigan's defense is great it's going to be the ability to score quickly that washington can do that's just going to keep keep them ahead so washington wins okay do you want to score uh, sure. Let's give me a score. Uh, we'll go uh, thirty-one to seventeen. Okay. Uh, uh we'll I'll. Go. Uh, I'm I'm next alphabetically. Alphabetically, so, um, I predicted Michigan to beat Texas. Uh, in the in the championship, I'm gonna keep Michigan. Uh, in this case, beating Washington. I think uh, Michigan's defense will will be a problem for Washington. Even though Washington's gonna make plays, they're gonna score points. Uh, but I'm going to pick Michigan to win. It's going to be uh, 31 to 31 to 20. Uh, Yancey. That's on. Yeah. It's cool. up to you. Right? Um, all right. I think uh, since I was completely wrong last time, it's kind of hard to be like, well, I thought since these guys lost to these guys, they're better. Um, I actually think I was more impressed by Washington and their win over Texas. And I thought Texas was going to beat Alabama. So um, sticking with that, I think I'll go Washington. Um, Let's see. I would say 41-35 Washington wins. Okay. Cody. First off, thirty-one seventeen, Dustin. Really? That's to me. That's, that's no respect. I, no respect at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it just blows my mind. But anyway, uh, I, I'm gonna. I think this is gonna be a really close game. 
Um, I, I'm going to side with Scott, though. I'm going to say Michigan's going to win this game. Um, I think I agree that the defense is probably going to show up. It's going to it's all going to be on the pass rush. That's a, that's where this this game is going to be decided, in my opinion, um, is Michigan's pass rush. I think that um, there will be times that Penix gets to throw off and he'll throw that perfect dime to Odunze or whoever it is right into the corner of the end zone, get a touchdown. But there's also going to be three, maybe even four sacks um, that that Michigan gets on on Penix. And for that, um, I think that uh, Michigan will be able to run the ball effectively with Blake Corum. And they're going to win this game. It's going to be, um, I'm going to say, 27-24 Michigan. Okay. We'll check in on that next week. And then in the last five minutes, we wanted to talk about the last week of the NFL uh, and some some playoff positioning games and things like that. Uh, so the number one seeds are, are set. Uh, 49ers will be the number one seed and home field advantage throughout the NFC. And the Ravens will be the number one seed in NFC and home field advantage throughout the AFC. What's crazy is Sunday night's game uh, between the Dolphins and the Bills. The winner not only win, gets the AFC East, but gets the number two seed. Uh, so what's crazy about the Bills, if they win, they get number two seed, the number two seed in the AFC and home field advantage throughout the AFC until the AFC championship game. If they lose, they're out of the playoffs. <laughs> so they either get number two or out, mm-hmm. um, which is crazy. You, you don't think about that. And so that's just a crazy game to think about, um, AFC East. There's also the AFC South that's up in the air. Um, if the Jaguars beat the Titans, they win the AFC South, no questions asked. If they don't, though, the winner of Saturday's game between the Texans and the why can't I think of the name? Uh, the Texans and the Colts. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, between the Texans and the Colts, they win the AFC South. So it's kind of a you, you play that game on Saturday, and then uh, you have to wait till Sunday and see what the Jaguars do. So uh, anyone want to talk about those two games or any others that are still up in the air? I actually have a quick question, though, actually. Is it the same with the Dolphins? If they lose, are they out? No, the Dolphins are in the playoffs already. They have clinched the playoffs. Oh, that's right. I knew that. That's right. It's based on conference record. Uh, The Bills have a bad conference record. And so if they lose, uh, they technically can still make it in, but they would need the Steelers to lose against the Ravens that are starting all their backups. Uh, And they would need uh, more help even than that. I'm trying to remember the other stuff. I think they would need the the Colts and the Texans to end in a tie. Um, (laughs) And so, yeah. If there's any team that can end in a tie, it's those two, though. But they can do it. Zero zero tie game. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Especially if the playoffs are on the line. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think. That have, sorry. Do you think I that do. will affect how the Dolphins coach for this game? Or put. Do you think it affects at all who they put in or don't put in or anything? Or because I mean, to them, it's not really a. It's but it's it is. Kind of a, I mean, uh, the, the AFC East is on the line, and so they get the number two seed and home field advantage until the AFC Championship game. I think that's a big deal. Okay. Um, okay. So okay. I, I think they're definitely amped up for it. But the, the way Dolphins, you were explaining it for the Bills, it kind of sounded like. I mean, the Dolphins are kind of there either way. So, and you know, like we've seen in the past when teams like got it, they'll sit important guys. So I was just wondering if that might be a factor, but it seems a little too close for something like that. Yeah. I think the Dolphins will either be the two seed or the six seed. And so it's a big, big difference. Yeah. yeah so definitely. yeah, maybe five. I can't remember how it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If the Dol- if the Dolphins lose, there's the potential that they then have to play the Bills again later on in the playoffs, you know, after winning a game or two or, you know, even right away. Um, and wouldn't wouldn't, wouldn't want to do that. Um right. my prediction is is I, I I don't trust the Bills and Josh Allen to cope with the pressure well. And so I, I I'm gonna predict the Dolphins win there. Cody, you were gonna say something? Yeah, I was just going to go back to the the, the Texans-Colts game um, and say that I think, you know, just to point out, if, if the Texans do win, the Jaguars lose against the Titans, Texans win that division, and and, and, and I'm right. Just <laughs> just to say, if that happens, I'd be really proud about that. And so that is something super interesting. Three teams tied right now, nine and seven. So 
Yeah. In the last minute, I want to mention the other divisions that are up for uh, if the Cowboys win, they win the NFC East and they always win at home. They would be the number two seed. So that's a big deal. Uh, if they lose and the Eagles win, the Eagles win the, the NFC East. So that's a that's a big one to, to keep your eyes on. Uh, NFC South is also up in the air. If the Buccaneers beat the Panthers, the lowly Panthers, the Buccaneers win the NFC South. If they don't, it's the winner between the Falcons and the Saints that also win the NFC South. And so no matter what, it's going to be a bad team winning the NFC South. That's how it is this year. But um, I think that's all the ones that are up for um, for uh, standings. And so uh, we have less than 30